is a revision guide for energy systems in AQAPE Fed 3 Section 1. The immediately usable form of chemical energy for muscular contraction is a compound called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. ATP is made up of an adenosine molecule and three phosphate molecules. It's between the second and third phosphate molecules the energy is stored in the form of a high energy bond. It's the body's job to transfer the chemical energy stored in the food we eat into the usable energy found in ATP. Energy is released when ATP is broken down and energy is required to resynthesize it. The breakdown of ATP releases adenine diphosphate or ADP, a phosphate molecule, and energy. The muscles have sufficient ATP available for very short bursts of high intensity activity, less than two seconds. For anything longer than that, it is necessary to resynthesize the ATP during the activity to ensure it can be sustained. The body does this by three methods. The first method is the ATP PC energy system, secondly via the lactate anaerobic energy system and thirdly via the aerobic energy system. The first system we're going to look at is the phosphocreatine or ATP PC energy system. Phosphocreatine is an energy rich compound that when broken down releases energy to resynthesize ATP. No oxygen is involved in this process so it's entirely anaerobic. For every molecule of, of PC that is broken down, enough energy is released to recreate or resynthesize one molecule of ATP. The energy is released rapidly and allows for the rapid resynthesis of ATP that is necessary if the body is undertaking short bursts of maximal work. The disadvantage of the PC system is that the stores of PC are limited, only sufficient for approximately 5 to 8 seconds of high intensity exercise. So although the PC system is excellent for providing energy rapidly, its effects only last for a short period of time. If we wish to work at a high level for longer, we need another energy source to resynthesize the ATP. That system would be the lactate anaerobic energy system or lactic acid system. The lactate anaerobic energy system involves the partial breakdown of glucose. A full breakdown of glucose can only occur in the presence of oxygen, so this is an anaerobic process. Glucose is stored around the body in glycogen. When it is required, it is converted back to glucose and through a process known as glycolysis, is converted into pyruvate. It, during this process, enough energy is released to reform two molecules of ATP and some hydrogen ions are released. The hydrogen ions are combined with oxygen from respiration and electron transport chain to form water. However, at some point, dependent on your VO2 max, so much hydrogen enters the electron transport chain that it exceeds the amount of oxygen available. The excess hydrogens cannot remain unattached and so combine with the pyruvate to form lactate or lactic acid. The lactate anaerobic energy system does not resynthesize ATP as rapidly as the ATP PC system because there are more chemical processes involved, but it's still very quick and can enable the body to engage in maximal or high intensity work for a period of time. It is much quicker than the aerobic energy system. The drawback of the lactic anaerobic system is the production of lactic acid and its accumulation in the muscle cells and the blood. During exercise, the complete breakdown of glucose to provide energy for ATP resynthesis is possible, provided that the supply of oxygen to the muscles can be maintained. The breakdown of glycogen and glucose using oxygen is therefore said to be an aerobic process. The initial stage of the breakdown of glucose is called glycolysis and produces a chemical called pyruvic acid or pyruvate. During this process, two molecules of ATP are reproduced. The pyruvic acid formed during glycolysis is added to an enzyme called coenzyme A to become acetyl coenzyme A. This is allowed to enter the next stage in the aerobic breakdown, which occurs within the mitochondria and is known as the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle consists of a series of eight enzyme-driven reactions that oxidize acetyl coenzyme A to carbon dioxide. There are also enough energy produced to resynthesize two molecules of ATP and hydrogen ions are released. The hydrogen atoms that are part of acetyl coenzyme A are transferred to chemicals called hydrogen carriers, which eventually enter the next stage of the aerobic metabolism, the electron transport chain. 
In this electron transport chain, a series of carrier molecules are involved in the oxidizing of hydrogen contained within the hydrogen carriers, producing water as a byproduct and generating enough energy to resynthesize 34 molecules of ATP, thus giving a grand total of 38 molecules of ATP for the aerobic breakdown of glucose. So a quick recap on the three energy systems, their advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the ATPP system. And the advantages is a fast production and no oxygen is required. Disadvantages, it's very inefficient, only producing enough energy to resynthesize one molecule of ATP for every molecule of PC broken down. There's also a limited store, which means it can only last up to a maximum of 10 seconds. With the lactate system, the advantages are no oxygen is required, and because there's only a few chemical reactions, it's still fairly fast. However, disadvantages, it's still inefficient, only producing enough energy to resynthesize two molecules of ATP for every molecule of glucose broken down. Also, it produces a fatiguing byproduct, lactic acid. With the aerobic system, we have the Krebs and the electron transport chain. The advantages is it's very efficient, with 36 molecules of ATP being able to be resynthesized from one molecule of glucose, with two from the Krebs cycle and 34 from the electron transport chain, and it produces no fatiguing byproducts. Disadvantages it does produce some byproducts, including carbon dioxide and H2O, which need to be got out of the system. And because there's lots of chemical reactions, it's quite slow to initiate. In the second table, you can see a four minute race and how the energy is produced and where it comes from. Finally, an exam question from June 2011 based on energy systems. Gymnastic events can last up to 90 seconds. Explain how the majority of energy is provided for these events. It's worth seven marks. Firstly, it's important that we think about the duration of the event, 90 seconds, and then how the majority of the energy is provided. Because it is only 90 seconds, we do not need to talk about the aerobic pathway. So nothing about Krebs or the electron transport chain. The two that we will need to think about will be the ATP PC system and the lactic acid or lactate anaerobic energy system. So from the mark scheme you can see there are 11 ways of getting your 7 marks. The most important bit is this bit at the bottom though. If the discussion about aerobic energy system is included in the answer, no marks can be credited for the whole answer unless they clearly indicate the system is involved after the completion of the routine during recovery. And also do not accept lactic system. It's either the lactic acid system or the lactate anaerobic system. Okay, so for these seven marks you can have anaerobic or without oxygen. Uh, during the first few seconds, stored ATP splits down, breaks down initially, and the ATP breaks down to ADP, ADP, ADP energy. The ATP PC system or the phosphocreatine system breaks down to C, add the PI, add energy. Therefore, the creatine and the phosphate is broken down. The energy is reused for the ATP resynthesis, so the ADP, ADP, add energy equals ATP. And it lasts for 5 to 10 seconds, there's a limited supply. The lactic acid system, or lactate energy, sorry, the lactate anaerobic system then takes over with the partial breakdown of glucose via glycolysis to pyruvate or pyruvic acid, where lactate or lactic acid is formed.